In 2004, Cameron Todd Willingham was executed by the state of Texas for allegedly setting a fire that resulted in the deaths of his three daughters. This tragic fire occurred in 1991 and was initially determined to be the result of arson. Willingham became the prime suspect despite his constant claims of innocence. He told officials over and over that he could have never killed his girls, that he could never live without them. However, the initial conclusion of arson, as well as testimony from various witnesses, was enough for the courts to declare him guilty and sentence him to death by lethal injection. Since Willingham's execution, evidence has been uncovered that the entire prosecution was carried out unfairly and inaccurately. Three separate studies have concluded that the alleged arson was in fact an accidental fire. Clearly, an innocent man, an innocent father was put to death. This is not an isolated case and not the only problem that exists with capital punishment in the United States. The death penalty may appear to be the only possible just punishment for some crimes, but in reality, it results in more unnecessary, unfair killing, and it should be abolished. First of all, the death penalty is discriminatory and unfair. It results in the execution of innocent people, such as Cameron Todd Willingham. According to Mary Williams in her book, Capital Punishment, more than 100 people have been freed from death row, while only around 800 have been executed. This means that, on average, one out of every nine people on death row is innocent. Williams also cites the results of a study over the past 20 years that states that 68% of death penalty verdicts must later be reversed due to serious errors, including incompetent defense lawyers, police and prosecutors who suppressed key evidence, and judges and juries who are biased. We have to remember that people are only human and everyone makes mistakes. But when these mistakes result in the loss of a human life, they become even more costly. The chart behind me shows all of the death penalty verdict reversals since 1973. The death penalty is also applied unfairly. According to the Death Penalty Information Center, close to half of death row is made up of African Americans. Now, when you consider that, according to the World Almanac, African Americans only make up about 13% of this country's population, you can see that the number of African Americans on death row is greatly out of proportion with the number of African Americans in this country. The death penalty should also be abolished because most of the time it is not a deterrent to crime. The statement is difficult to prove by facts or statistics, but reasoning suggests that it is true. Over 90% of criminal experts agree that the death penalty is no more of a deterrent than life imprisonment, according to a study published in, the published in the Journal of Criminal Law and Criminology. In his book, Against the Death Penalty, Gardner Hanks points out that stating the death penalty is a deterrent to crime assumes that, first of all, the decision to commit murder is a reasonable decision, and the potential murderer carefully considers the possible consequences, including the risk of execution. It assumes that murderers make rational decisions about homicides and are in control of their minds and emotions. It assumes potential murderers fear execution and that all people reason in the same way, when in fact criminals, by definition, are people who do not fit into the range of normal behavior, so they think differently from other people. However, it cannot be denied that in some situations, the thought of the death penalty does discourage killing, but this does not, dis this does not justify its use. The death penalty is also immoral. The more executions are carried out, the less people notice or care about the value of human life. By supporting the death penalty, we send the message that violence is the way to solve problems. We are teaching people not to kill by killing. America is working to reduce violence and human suffering by reducing gun crimes, eliminating nuclear weapons, and ending poverty. So why do we continue the death penalty? We do not have the right to decide who lives and who dies. How can we say when a murder is serious enough to warrant death? There is no other crime in which the punishment is equal to what was done. We do not stab or shoot, mug or assault our criminals. Executing criminals does not take away what they have done and will not make them understand the wrongness of what they did. Criminal behavior cannot be excused, but killers can be punished in other ways, such as life imprisonment without parole. 
which places them in a position where they are removed from society and forgotten. Mario M. Cuomo, a former governor of New York, states that the death penalty lowers us all by surrendering to the worst that is in us. The official power to kill by execution has never elevated a society, never brought back a life, never inspired anything but hate. There are times when it is difficult to say that the death penalty should not be used. The murders of the innocent are undeserved and awful, and we sometimes struggle to understand why murderers should be able to continue living after what they have done. We feel that criminals should have to suffer a punishment that is equal to their offense. However, the death penalty is not the answer to our problems. Stephen Bright, the director for the Southern Center for Human Rights, points out, and I quote, if you rounded up the 3,000 people who are under death sentence in this country and executed them all today on national television, I doubt that the streets would be any safer tomorrow. The death penalty needs to be abolished because it is discriminatory, unfair, not a deterrent to crime, and immoral. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., returning violence for violence only multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Thank you.